Getting a new operating system is a bit like getting a new suit. You know it's still the same old you underneath, but when you look in the mirror, well, you just look a little bit sharper. And the old dog in this case is the 2013 Mac Pro, but I have to say it's looking pretty resplendent in its new Mac OS Big Sur clothing. Installing the first new release of macOS is considered by some to be reckless behaviour. They'll tell you to wait for the first couple of updates, but I think waiting is for wimps, so I'm just going to bring it on. Now, as it happens, Apple bungled the release of Big Sur to the point where most people couldn't actually download it on the release day without encountering a whole bunch of errors. In fact, it seems that Apple had a rather significant outage across lots of its different systems, including its payment systems. Uh, and in the process, this exposed a rather sneaky app logging process, but we'll be covering that in this week's podcast. There are also lots of accounts of users with bricked Macs after attempting to download and install Big Sur. So all joking aside, if you decide to go for it, you do so at your own risk. And remember, what works for me won't necessarily work for you. So it may be sensible to back up your system drive to an external drive with something like Carbon Copy Cloner before you start. And that way, if things go wrong, you can just boot up from the external drive and reverse the process. I figured I've been through the pain barrier on this 2013 Mac Pro, so what's the worst that can happen? Uh, plus, I've got a spare Apple SSD kicking around in case anything goes awry. But what I really wanted to know is, can you install Big Sur smoothly on this old 2013 Mac Pro? And can you still make use of an eGPU if you do this? Well, actually, I've already given part of the game away by having shown my Mac Pro in the background here happily running Big Sur. Uh, I downloaded the installer the day after the release, and I did the installation, and it went fine. Now, just a quick top tip for those of you who've got more than one Mac to update. After you download the installer, you know it does that auto start, and it loads up the splash screen inviting you to install. Well, if you close the installer and have a look in your Applications folder, you'll find that application and you can just copy the installer off to a flash drive or an external disk, and then you can use it on all your Macs, uh, which is better than doing multiple downloads because the installer is 12 gigabytes. I found that the install worked seamlessly for me, and I was doing an upgrade from Catalina, uh, version 10.15.6. Uh, when I originally installed Catalina, I did it when I upgraded my SSD, so it was a fresh install. And what you might find is that if you've done multiple upgrades over the years going from one OS to the next, you may well find that your system speed and reliability improve if you do a fresh install. And I think it's also worth saying that my upgraded SSD is still an original Apple SSD. It's one of the newer generations, so it's faster than what came with the uh, Mac Pro originally. Uh, but I know some of you are using NVMe drives in your 2013 Mac Pro, and that may be a different experience. I haven't tested that. If you're an eGPU user like me, then you want to uh, boot up without the eGPU connected in order to do the install. And once Big Sur is installed, then it's a case of following the instructions for installing Purge Wrangler. Now you can find the beginner's guide in the project wiki on the Purge Wrangler GitHub page, and I'll put a link in the description to that. The installation process is really quite easy, but I noted that there is now a disclaimer on the page that states that under macOS 11, that's Big Sur, you may not be able to do Delta system updates. Um, so what that means is that the standard update function within macOS may not work as intended, and you instead need to go over to the Apple website to manually download a combo update. Uh, they also state that File Vault will need to be disabled. If you've got an older Mac that's running an unsupported macOS version via a DOS dude patch, then you'll find that those aren't supported at the moment, at least. The Purge Wrangler script install process is very similar to as it was with Catalina, but there's a couple of extra steps in that setup process. And first, as we mentioned, File Vault needs to be disabled. So if you've got that on, you'll need to switch that off first. Then you restart your Mac whilst holding down Command R on the keyboard, and this brings up the macOS recovery system. From the Utilities menu, you can select Terminal, and that will allow you to issue two commands. Uh, firstly, we turn off System Integrity Protection with the command csrutil disable. And that's exactly the same as we did with Catalina. But then we've also got a new command to switch off Authenticated Root, or ART. And that's why File Vault needs to be disabled. And the command is csrutil authenticated-root disable. You don't want to re-enable either of these things after you've used the script. If you find that you need to switch them back on, then first of all, you want to uninstall Purge Wrangler. 
So once you've done that, you can reboot the machine into macOS, uh, still with the eGPU disconnected. And now you can run the Purge Wrangler install script as per the instructions on the page. If you're using an RX 5000 series card, like the 5700 XT, don't let the script do an auto detect, that will crash your Mac. Just set up the eGPU manually. It's really quite simple. Once you've done that, you reboot the system again and plug in your eGPU. And at this point, I found that the system didn't recognize my eGPU. It didn't crash, it didn't hang, it just did absolutely nothing at all. And I've had this happen occasionally before, so I wasn't particularly worried. I just left the eGPU plugged in and rebooted the system, and it came up fine. The eGPU has been working faultlessly ever since. And I've been using the Mac Pro for video editing in DaVinci Resolve and for general office work since uh, I've installed Big Sur, and it's been completely stable. The eGPU has been plugged in the whole time, and I, I haven't had any issues at all. Now, you may be wondering if that dual display bug is still present with the 5700 XT. And yes, I'm afraid it is. Apple still haven't fixed this. So in order to get maximum performance from your eGPU, you either need to connect two monitors to it, or you need to have a monitor and a dummy display. So that's how I run mine. I've got my Dell 4K monitor, and then I've got a headless 4K display port adapter. And in macOS, I set the screens to be mirrored, and uh, that works fine for me, and I get the increased performance. And speaking of increased performance, whilst I was testing the eGPU, I ran a quick Geekbench 5 CPU test, and I got my highest ever multi-core score, which was 7,722. The highest I've seen previously is 7,674, so perhaps Big Sur is a little better optimized. Now, I doubt anyone would ever notice such a marginal gain in the real world, but I'm hardly gonna complain about eking a bit more performance out of this aging beast. And it may just be an anomaly from the test. I, I didn't test it very thoroughly. Uh, my CPU, incidentally, is the 12 core, in case you were wondering. So if you've got a 2013 Mac Pro, should you upgrade to Mac OS Big Sur? I think that depends on whether or not you rely on your 2013 Mac Pro as your main machine for work. And if you do, then I would suggest that you wait a little bit longer. If you do decide to upgrade now, make sure you take precautions and clone your system drive before you start. Uh, I needed to upgrade my machine because I'm planning to do a whole bunch of testing against my Apple Silicon Mac Mini, and I wanted them both to be on the same operating system. I say my Apple Silicon Mac Mini, uh, but I don't actually have it yet. It is slowly making its way to me after inexplicably being sat at Hong Kong Airport for two days, so uh, thanks for that, Apple. Uh, anyway, it landed in London today, so I should have it imminently, and I'll start making content for the channel as soon as that arrives. So if you'd like to see some of that Apple Silicon versus 2013 Mac Pro content, please support the channel with just one click of that subscribe button. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful for you in some way. Uh, but that's all for today. Maybe I did enough for a thumbs up or a thumbs down if uh, you're feeling miserable. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.